Well, we are in Idaho Falls, Idaho, picking up the rest of our crew, known as Llamas. We are at the galactic headquarters of Wilderness Ridge Trail Llamas, where we're here to pick up Marcus, the public land llama, McShane, Butch, and Tokyo. They're everywhere. Oh, you need to get those things straightened out. They're gonna get run over. That one there, they, these ones aren't big enough. They can't pack anything. I bet you Bo's got a great big one there. Bo Beatty. His wife Kirsten run this operation. Oh, good to well. see you. Good to see you. How you been? Good, I lost one good. Yeah? In busy season. Yeah? I sent you some unique guys. Or McShane, he's got the blue eye. And he's probably the strongest boy you're taking this trip. Okay. And then you have Butch. He's very squirrely. Lots of lots. Squirrely. That's a lots of mean, attitude. Squirrely. <laughs> and then you got Tokyo. He's old trusty. He's hiked over 500 miles along the Continental Divide in the last two seasons. Really? Yeah. He's a he's a kind of a through hike llama. And then uh, Marcus. Right. The young gun. The public land llama is going on his maiden hunting voyage. Yep, that's right. Thanks to the folks at Leupold and Onyx. Yeah. So this is all potable water for you guys or the llamas. And then you have three things of cookies, llama cookies. Yeah. Then you got four stakeouts, yeah. four stakeout leads. You got two brushes. Okay. And then you've got a big scale that goes up to 100 man. pounds to weigh everything. Yeah. These are jumbo panniers. Okay. So camera, bulky camera gear and stuff. And then these are kind of your standard go-to. They have the side pockets. They're a little bit smaller right. box. Okay. The side pockets. So we can back you up and then bring okay. the boys over. Okay. The webbing always goes towards the shoulders. Back of the webbing forms line to the back of the webbing. Yeah. So all the cinches will be on one side. Yeah. And so you just want to make sure they're not too tangled up. And then we're going to hold our blanket and take our putters out underneath the webbing. And then I count my buckles. That's buckle one. Okay. okay. And this is buckle two, and we just gently do it. And it's got to be on that um, upward side of the belly. So we connect his breast strap right here to the front cinch. We go up and over here. And then we do the same over here. Thanks so much. Yep. Have a good Appreciate trip. It. Thank you. Appreciate you everything. You're saving no, me. You're so. gonna. You're gonna save me some headache. I've I've been down this this kind of adventure before, and the last thing you want to do is get there and say, "Dang, this isn't what I thought." But I'm gonna try it anyhow, and you end up two days stuck somewhere. Well, we are here in Albuquerque picking up our guest hunter, who happens to be my uncle, Jim Stickler, my mom's youngest brother and if there are any stories of my youth that would incriminate me they're all about to be told because jim was my roommate in college and was just well a co-conspirator in many of the devious things that you do in your youth that you hope the world never finds out about <laughs> You ready? Time. I'm ready. All right, <laughs> let's get your stuff. <laughs>
one of the problems of towing a trailer is the truck will easily get through there. But when you get down on that bottom at this pinch point right here, you get these things called tongue jacks. We're digging out the bottom where, where you approach it and where you come out. And then we're trying to lift up the sides with more rock so that the angle that this will come in and go out at will be less. I think you're good. So here's our dilemma, folks. We lost out on plan A. Now we're to the end of the road for plan B. And we don't know where the elk might be. So we're going to set up a camp here for a day or so. That ain't good. <laughs> What's that all about? I looked high and low. First day, it takes a while to get going. <laughs> you bring in your you bring in your bow. I'm bringing my bow in. Oh, okay. Unless you don't want me to. I'd prefer you do. After you do, if you want. Mm -mm. Uh, I think what we do, we walk up this road to where that gate is, and then we walk around that private and get up to the back up on those hills and we just start calling see if someone strikes up the band we'll go play music <laughs> with them so we're gonna go out here and get wet you can see the thunder clouds are gathering welcome to mexico and new mexico in september jim and i aren't hunting in mexico he and i got thrown in jail in mexico one time <laughs> new mexico yeah you notice how we picked the unit pretty far north of the mexican border Bad idea. Yeah. All right, folks, follow along. We're going to go up this way because there's two water tanks right here. There'll be elk somewhere around there. Might get run over when I start calling. Big 
gold brown face bear. Took off running up that way. Guess we saw a sign. We gotta worry about this spring. Cross this one off our list. Guess that's part of why you go check it out. Sorry. I think we'll take that one off the map. I was wondering why there were so few tracks. Man, for a big spring being in there, there isn't a lot of signs. seen one that day. Really? Well, whose pack are you gonna put it in? My pack's full. I'm fitting it. Not good. Not good. Mama and the cub. Oh, here comes the other one. That one's running up the tree. Here comes the other one, the brown one, going up the tree. Oh no. Hopefully they just mosey out. I think we'll go this way. <clears throat> there, she ran. She'll meet him up. Oh yeah. There they go. Don't need those kind of arrows. Oh, you were getting an arrow ready, huh? <laughs> I ain't getting eaten. <laughs> I was just gonna hit it with my... You go ahead, I'm gonna hit it with an arrow. <laughs> you live in the world of big brown bears. Huh? I got ran over by one once too, and I swore I'd never go undefended again. How do you get run over by a brown bear, but you don't get eaten? It had a cub with it. I was coming back from this fish creek, we we're cutting trap line trail. Mm -hmm. No gun, we're cutting trap line trail. I dropped my chainsaw back where we split up to try and figure out who's supposed to, where we were going. Figure middle of the day, no big deal. Get about 200 yards back and about, hear that tree up there, there's a brown bear standing inside the road. This ain't good. <laughs> so I yelled at it, thinking it would hear me and spook. Well, it was so thick a cover, I don't think it could tell where the voice came from. As soon as I yelled, I got that far out of the way before she came by me. I'm eating. She ran right by me. Don't think she ever even knew I was there. I found the first tree I could and climbed up and screamed for about an hour. We crossed an allotment fence down there. A lot of times on the Forest Service, you'll see a random fence and you're wondering, is that private or public? A lot of times it's what separates grazing allotments. 
this allotment here, you can see there's fresh cow crap everywhere. There's some ornery old bull down there carrying on. We aren't seeing anything for elk sign. When we we're on the other side of the allotment fence, we're seeing a lot of elk tracks. And no, really no cattle track. See, there's that cow. <laughs> but sometimes cows will at least temporarily displace elk. So now that I know this allotment is active with a lot of cattle, I'm not hunting over on the allotment. I'm gonna hunt over to the west on the side of the fence that doesn't have cattle. I mean, public land, they can use this public land as much as we do. Anyhow, in the arid states of Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Nevada, the public land grazing actually puts a lot of permanent water sources on the landscape that we wouldn't have if it weren't for the, the grazers. So trade off there, but you don't have to be Einstein to look here and see all this cattle sign. And we haven't seen an elk track for a mile. And we were seeing lots of elk sign. I actually heard a faint bugle when we were over on the other side. So. Move along, Mama. Well, Jim. A lot of fun, huh? Reminds me of the last elk hunt I was on. <laughs> we didn't see any. <laughs> uh, well, the camera guys said they heard one. Yeah. So. We had some of that in the last hunt, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, folks. We didn't see tracks, though. Right. The good news is we got here for an afternoon hunt that I didn't expect that we could do. And we went and eliminated... I don't know how many square miles, but a lot. We found a tank that was completely dry. <laughs> Solves the answer why there's no elk tracks in there. So now, since this is plan B, today's Friday afternoon, well now Friday evening, we're gonna hunt an area west of us all day tomorrow. And if we don't encounter elk, I'm not living and dying on plan B. We're gonna <laughs> load everything up and we're heading to plan C. And then we'll have five days left. I know what else to do. Works for me. All right. I don't want to hunt where there's not any. No, it's... Let's, let's go where there is some. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like fishing, you know? In the bathtub, you don't catch many fish because there aren't many in there. Sometimes in my bathtub there well, is. <laughs> I should have qualified that statement for the audience. Anyhow, folks, thanks for watching. Tomorrow will be a new day. There will be elk bugling. They, they will strike up the band. There will be noise coming from every ridge top. Jim doesn't seem convinced. Oh, I'm convinced. Oh. I just don't know if it's tomorrow or the next day. Or the next day. Or, or the next one. Yeah. Or the day after I leave. <laughs> 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 Thanks for watching, folks.